Hello, government students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have your notes for Chapter 14, Section 2, Deciding Cases. And we're going to talk about steps in deciding major Supreme Court cases. Um, we kind of talked a little bit about how you appeal a case to the Supreme Court back in Chapter 13, but um, we're going to talk a little bit about how a case reaches the courts. And once court is a case is at the Supreme Court, um, there are some different things that have to take place. First, uh, each lawyer is going to submit a brief. And a brief, for the most part, is uh, basically a, a quick summary of the case. Um, what could happen is you could have someone ask about uh, submitting an amicus curiae brief, which is basically a friend of the court brief. So it's kind of like this. Let's say we have a a Supreme Court decision or a court decision uh, that's out there that hasn't been decided yet, but there are people that feel like whatever the decision is made on this case is going to impact them in a, a certain way. And so they may not be a, a party to the trial or to the case, but they feel like they could be uh, somebody who could be deeply impacted. And what they might do is have their attorney submit this amicus curiae brief, which is basically a front of the court briefs. Uh, you can have oral arguments. And oral arguments are, are really highly regulated within the Supreme Court. Uh, typically, attorneys are only going to have 30 minutes to present their case. And what's interesting is attorneys who are practicing or preparing to uh, you know, present their case before the Supreme Court uh, really do a lot of work that you might do if you were on a speech team. They, they time their, their presentation. And what they're trying to do is to be as convincing as they can, be able to tell everything they wanted to say uh, within a period of time that is limited to 30 minutes. OK, because the court, can, you know, can only hear so much. And by keeping it short and to the point, that's how they get a lot of work done in a year's time. Um, once both attorneys have presented their their case, then the members of the Supreme Court go into a conference. And it's in that conference that the justices are going to decide a case. Just so that you know, we have nine members of the Supreme Court. Uh, it is possible that occasionally because of health issues or other commitments that you might not have all the justices present at the time that a case is being heard. So number four, uh, you can have a vote being taken at the conference. And what might happen is that there has to be at least six justices present. If they have less, then they can't make a decision. But with six or even eight, uh, there is that possibility of having a tie. And if there is a tie, then whatever happened at the lower court, that decision is going to stand. OK, if we take a vote and the majority are in agreement as far as the case, then we're going to write some opinions. And there are basically four different types of opinions I'm going to mention here. Uh, you can have a unanimous opinion, which basically means that all the justices agree and they agree for the same reasons. You can have a majority opinion where uh, the vast majority of the justices agree for the same reason, but you might have some that don't. Uh, you can have what we call a concurring opinion, uh, which basically means that we can have a situation where um, we kind of vote with the majority, but we have different reasons for that, and thus we write different opinions. And then you can have a dissenting opinion. These are the people who are in the minority uh, who are going to voice their opinion for why they disagreed with everybody else. And sometimes these dissenting opinions are probably the most interesting opinions of all. All right. Thank you very much.